In this middle part of the tuition graphing problem, nothing fundamentally new is going to happen. But something super important is going to happen anyways. This video is really going to show the importance of doing examples before the function definition. In this video, what we want is complicated enough that I'm going to spend quite a lot of time just getting the examples right. And once I do that, the function definition itself will be a lot easier. So this is a demonstration of the power of the way the method puts examples before function definitions. Now I'm in tuition graph V3, and that has the complete data definitions for both school and list of school. And now it's time to go design the first of the functions. So remember, what we're supposed to do is to design a function that consumes information about schools. In other words, it consumes a value of type list of school. And it's got to produce a bar chart kind of like this one. So what I'm going to do in order to avoid scrolling so much, because scrolling makes people seasick, I know, is I'm just going to copy that and bring it all the way down here to my functions part. And I'll just stick it in a comment for now. It's just to remind us what we're trying to do. So let's see, we're designing a function. It consumes list of school. And it's going to produce an image like that. So that's what that has to do. And let's see, produce bar chart showing names and tuitions of the consumed schools. Let's do a stub, define, we'll call it chart. And it consumes a list of school. And what I use for the stub for functions that produce image is this. White, there we go. Great, the stub is well formed. Now let's try to do some examples. Well, it's a function operating on a list. It's a function operating on a self-referential data definition, so the base case test should be first. So what are you supposed to produce if I hand you an empty list of schools? Well, you've got to produce an image. So I'm going to produce this same dummy value that the stub happens to produce. And that'll be the base case result. Let's do another example. Let's say check, expect. Now the rule is too long, so let's go ahead and do one that's too long. Check, expect, chart. You know what, let's do one that's one long first. It's tempting to do the too long one, but let's do the one long one first, it'll be simpler. Chart, cons, and now we need some school. Make, school, you can use any name you want. We'll just call it S1 for now, because it'll be simple. Make a school called S1, at which the tuition is, I don't know, $9.99. Okay. Let's not make it $9.99. Let's make it some nice more round number than that, like $800. Just keeping things easy to work with here. Easy, not cute. So if I've got to chart that, then what do I want to see? Hmm. Well, I know that the base case result is this. The question is, what's the contribution of this one school here? Hmm, well, let's think about that. What is the contribution of that? Well, hmm, we want to see the text, that's for sure. Whoops, remember there's that function text. We want to see the text of S1, the name of the school. And how big do we want the text to be? Well, you might remember that there was a constant up here font size that I used. So let me say that it's of size font size and there's another constant font color. So that's going to get me the name S1 but let's see here that's going to get it to me horizontally. 
and I want this to be vertically. So I need to rotate that. So let me rotate it. I need to rotate it that way. I can never remember which way the rotation is. I'll say minus 90. Let's see, that gets me part of it. That gets me just the text. And I've got to put them all next to each other so it seems like there's a beside here. Now let me show you something. I know I'm not done yet, but I'm going to run this anyways. That first test passed. This test failed because rotate expects an angle in degrees as its first argument. Oh, I've got the arguments in the wrong order. So I'll put this over here. What I wanted to show you there is as, as examples become more complicated, and especially once they involve images, you can go ahead and run them even before they're complete just to see if the part you have makes sense. You'll catch errors like wrong order of arguments to rotate. Catch them right now. Finding a mistake right after you make it is easier than finding it five minutes later. So that's why I ran that then. Let's run it again. The test is failing, which we expected, but let's just take a look at what the image is to see if it's starting to look right for us. Uh, well, I've got S1. That part's not bad, but it's rotated the wrong way. That's what I was almost guaranteed to get wrong, was the direction of the rotation. All right, that's starting to look better, but that's just getting me the S. Now remember, 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 this little box around here is not actually part of my result. This box is put here by the test window. See how the test window puts a box there and a box there around the base result? That box is not actually part of my result. So there's something missing here. One is that I want that color bar and the other is that I want that box. Let's see. Let's try to make the color bar. Hmm. I see this is putting that next to that. It seems like what I also need is to put the color bar. So that's going to be something like rectangle. And how wide is it? Well, I have a constant for that. Bar width. Bar width and it's going to be some fraction of 800. Remember I have that thing called Y scale? What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 800 times the Y scale. That gets me the bar height and then there's the bar color and I want that to be solid. So now I've got the text and the bar but I need to line those up. Now here's the thing you probably wouldn't have remembered, but there's a primitive, very useful here, called overlay-align center bottom. And that's gonna put that color bar and that text lined up, I think, nicely. Let's try it. Rectangle expects a mode as a third argument. Oh, I've got them in the wrong order here. What do we got? Hmm. That color bar isn't very high, is it? I'm multiplying 800 times the Y scale. Oh, 800 isn't a very high tuition. 8,000 is a higher tuition. Let's use 8,000. Try that. Now we're almost there. This is almost like what we have here, except there's no black box around the color bar. So let me add a black box too. We'll say rectangle bar width times 800 Y scale. Oh, not 800, 8,000. 800 is a pretty good deal for tuition. 
outline black. And that's going to be that outline there. Now let's see what we got. Hey, that's looking better. That does look like one of the bars that we're interested in. Now, notice something very, very important here. That was kind of complicated. In fact, you may not feel comfortable with it yet. And if you don't feel comfortable with it, what I would do is stop the video right here and replay it. Let me, let me read it through first and then replay it. All it's saying is it's saying, listen, in order to make one bar, take three things and align their bottom centers. That's what's getting everything shifted to the bottom here. Align their bottom centers so that it says the text, that's the name of the school, a black outline of the right size, in other words, bar width, and then the tuition times the scaling factor, and then the actual colored text, bar width, and then the tuition times the scaling factor. And this whole thing here is producing just the one bar. And what this is saying is it's saying, oh, well, put all of that next to the base case result. So that's one check expect. That was so hard to produce that for the second example, for the times two example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the second school be S2, except it's going to come first in the list. And then that's going to be comsed on to make school S1, the original example, 8,000, which will be comsed on to empty. So now I've got a list that's too long. The second school in the list is the one we had before. The first school in the list is a new one. And I'm just going to take this value here and adjust it to be what I want. So this school is called S2, and it's 12,000 is its tuition. And now let's look at that. Two tests are failing, that's what we'd expect, but they're really starting to look right now. Oh wait, that didn't align properly. That Float it up. Oh yeah, because remember that's why we had to use we used overlay a line because we wanted to get the individual components of a bar to be lined up right, but beside isn't good enough either. We need to use beside slash align bottom. And here we'll use beside slash align bottom. Now it's looking better. In previous weeks, people sometimes were like, oh, I don't understand why we do the examples before we do the function. Here's why we do the examples before we do the function right here. This problem is hard enough that figuring out specific examples takes time. We got to figure out how we want to draw it. Gee, we didn't use the right drawing function. Gee, we got the wrong order of arguments to this function. There's a whole bunch of stuff we had to figure out for the specific examples. Trying to write the general purpose function is always harder than writing a specific example. So if you're working on a problem where the specific examples are hard, it's just crazy to try to write the general purpose function first. The whole idea of this doing the examples first method is do the simplest things first because in hard problems, even the simplest things aren't that simple. So here's why we're doing the examples first, is these examples are a little bit complicated. The examples force us to figure out what it is we really want exactly how we want things to line up, exactly how we want things to look, what it is we really want. And once we know what we really want, coding the function definition is a lot easier.